Chris, the question I've got this morning is where do you find opportunity in a market that's been roaring like this? You uh, look at the growth fund, also small caps. Are, are, are small caps a place where investors should be paying more attention? They, they arguably haven't run quite as much. Well, I just spent the last two days meeting with about 30 companies, mostly primarily small to mid cap. And the excitement in the hallways at the conference were, were quite good. The opportunities are very specific, though. I think you have to look at the end markets. You know, data center recovery, I think, is going to be better this year. 5G, we've talked about infrastructure and devices. But we also see software security. I mean, clearly, after the Iranian situation, a lot of those companies started to rally. Yeah. That threat is not going away. We also see software that helps to optimize businesses. So when you think of retail, a lot of people think of Amazon. But what's powering a lot of the success in those areas that are causing companies to be able to compete with Amazon? There's a lot of information in the background, and, and those are the companies we were visiting with the last few days. And maybe some of the big guys still have uh, room to run. Kevin, you've got an outperform on Facebook, which, uh, which has had quite a run up to this point. Uh, what's left that investors haven't considered? Well, thanks for having me. And with respect to Facebook, I would say the opportunity set over the next year or two years remains probably as vibrant as ever. When you think through not just the advertising business, but new opportunities in e-commerce, which Mark Zuckerberg alluded to in his outlook for not just next year, but the next decade, I think that's really compelling. And I think from the standpoint of sentiment, you have uh, the opportunity where investors start to walk back some of the concerns they had about the worst case scenarios in regulatory. So you have the opportunity ahead of both positive estimate revisions and sentiment improvements. So uh, for Facebook, it seems like the, the runway remains very long, very compelling. Chris? Big return, big rally for semi stocks last year. Yesterday, you get this phase one trade deal simultaneously reports that there's going to be a greater crackdown on the supply chain where Huawei is concerned uh, for U.S. suppliers. And then just this morning, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing coming out with strong guidance. Are these still a buy? I think it's something you need to be cautious with. Uh, you know, yesterday at the Needham Growth Conference, there was a lot of those companies that are supplying that supply chain. Um, you know, Huawei is definitely separated from this trade agreement, and I think it should be. I mean, I think it's more of a defense. It's more, uh, a, you know, an extension of the Chinese military, for example. And so I would be cautious in that area, but Taiwan Semi, it's still spending money. There is a technological war there with Intel and Samsung and who can get to the smallest nanometer chip, and they are spending money. Now, what we would really like to see further in this year is a recovery and spend for the memory guys, the DRAM and NAND, which I think would then be able to continue that spending trend, but we haven't seen that yet. So they have moved very far quickly. It wouldn't surprise us to see some correction in that area. And in fact, I think it would be really healthy to have the extension of that bull rally, but to have some pullback that would give a better entry point for new investors to get involved. Kevin, uh, what is, if any, the, the 5G play in 2020 that, that investors should be paying attention to? What stocks are going to actually move on the rollout and, and potential uh, upside in 5G infrastructure? Well, I, I don't want to disappoint anyone with perhaps a, a boring answer, but what I would say is for consumer Internet, the opportunity in 5G is, is probably less than, than perhaps in some of the hardware sectors. When you think through Google, Facebook, all of the app ecosystem, that likely doesn't really change with respect to 5G. I mean, LTE serves, I would say, a pretty compelling speed, enables a lot of the technologies. Maybe you think through five years out and there are new, you know, novel opportunities with respect to VR and AR, but I, I don't think you get that in 2020 and you probably don't get it in 21. So probably wait and see uh, with respect to 5G as a, a catalyst for consumer internet. Yeah, I do wonder, Kevin, though, if places like gaming are where you could see, like, the the biggest or greatest adoption on a consumer side, at least initially. Uh, you have an outperform rating on Lyft, uh, target price of $81. Why do you like it? Well, I think the, the same logic uh, applies to both Lyft and Uber, which is going to be you have a rationalization of uh, the competitive dynamics in the United States. Uh, and I think from that standpoint, you have improved take rates. And when you look at the Uber and Lyft models, what you really have is an incredible amount of leverage on take rates. So, you know, 100 basis points improvement of 
what Uber and Lyft can take from the overall ecosystem can drive, you know, for Uber a billion dollars in EBITDA. So when you think through what the rationalization could mean, a reduction in the promotional activity we've seen over the last few years, those become very compelling. And let's be honest, sentiment around ride sharing and around some of the, the venture pa- venture back recent IPOs is, is not great. So again, opportunity for sentiment uh, revisions and improvement as well. Chris, what's the biggest pothole in the road in 2020 that investors should be worried about? And, and kind of what quarter or what month do you expect uh, for us to really see whether it's a, a significant danger? Look, I, I think some of the real risks are, you know, typically a tweet away. You know, are we going to throw up an embargo on certain companies? I mean, we saw that last year with Huawei. And I think for tech investors, that is something that we've now seen and we can see the impact. So that's something I'm really very much concerned about. Uh, You know, the discussion with ASML and and the pressure they were feeling on selling tools into the Chinese semiconductor manufacturing space, Mm. those are real risks. Those are kind of black swan events that we need to pay attention to. Um, But otherwise, you know, we're in an election year, and I think people want to get reelected, and we're going to see spending out of the government, military modernization on our front. Those are all real positive trends that I think, as an investor, I can get behind. Are you investing in military modernization? Are there names you like in aerospace and defense right now? Yeah, there's a lot. So jamming, right? So if you can spoof yeah. our military out there, there's new technologies that are being developed that are being put out in the battlefield that are protecting our soldiers, precision-guided missiles that have much greater precision. So there's a lot of activity out there, but they're just not your household names.